In this video I thought I'd talk about one of the most amazing parts of an LCD TV and that's the LCD screen. Now in case you're wondering about this particular TV, yes it is messed up. I don't know if somebody dropped it or what happened but you can see I've got a distortion on the screen and when I flex it with my finger you can see the liquid crystal changing a little bit. If you have a TV where you have damaged a screen like this there's really nothing you can do about screen. it other than now if you've ever taken one of these LCD screens apart, you know that the rearmost portion of the screen has your backlight that produces your light for your screen. We'll see if I can turn the top one on there. You see on this type of screen it has one at the top here and one at the bottom. Then you've got a diffuser that goes in front of the screen. It helps spread the light out evenly across the screen. And behind your diffuser you've got one of these polarization screens. And the most amazing part of the screen is this little panel here. This contains your thin film transistors and your liquid crystal and they're sandwiched together. Actually there's four different layers here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tear this apart and look at each layer under a microscope so you can get a better idea of this amazing technology and what's, uh, what's all combined here to produce your picture. Before I go ahead and dissect this thing I want to explain there's also one board that's attached to the screen here through your tape carrier package and this is called your TCON board or controller board and this actually communicates with the little pixels that are embedded inside of this board. Now here's what the screen looks like after you tear it all up. Kind of a mess here. I've got broken glass and different layers but I, I see four layers in front of me so I'm going to take the different layers and put them under the microscope and let you see what they look like. Okay here we're actually looking at a magnified view of the pixels believe it or not. There's just thousands of them on there. Let's see if I can get to the very edge of the glass here where you can see there's a the very edge and uh, yeah, you can see there are quite a few of them. Let me see if I can magnify that a little bigger. Focus that of course. Now what's amazing to me is that we have the technology to produce something so small that you can't even see it with your naked eye and yet look at how flawless each one of those pixels are. Move that across there a little bit. Now we can take a look at this piece of the screen. This has the array, or the grid, whatever you want to call it. It actually has a, it's basically a small uh, circuit board, or thousands of little circuits on it, that enable the um, TCON board to send a, a very low voltage signal to each pixel through this control grid. Again, you can't see anything, even with the magnifying glass on here. You just can't see the incredibly small grid that's on here, but I'll put it under the microscope one more time. We'll take a look at it. Okay, now we're now we're looking at this other piece of glass here. And you can see it's also got thousands of these little grids on here. And here we're looking at it with a little less magnification just so you can get an idea how many there are on here. This is just amazing. If you go to the very end of this you'll notice there's a there's a connecting point off the edge here where you can see the wires are joined to this control grid. It's amazing how small they are. You can actually see wires going to each one of those grids. There's your tape carrier package. Now here you're looking at the screen again and you can see the liquid crystal embedded in it is affected whenever I flex it. What happens is the crystal it becomes polarized when you put pressure against it. It actually blocks some of the light from coming through. Let's see if I can get a better view of it here. You can see it gets darker when you flex it. I'm essentially doing the same thing an electric current coming from the grid would do as it's passed across the electric crystal. Only you can cause a pixel at a time to go dark. It's amazing you control an individual pixel with electrical signals. But that's essentially what you do. I'll let you see what this looks like under the microscope with the electric grid and the uh, pixels and the liquid crystal combined. Now in this part we're looking at a combination of the pixels and the, uh, the uh, liquid uh, crystal and the control grid and you can see how when I flex the board ever so slightly the liquid crystal tends to cover up some of those pixels. And that's essentially what would happen if I was applying an electrical signal to this board here. I'm trying to do this by just putting a little pressure, but if, 
if you had an electrical signal going to each pixel, you'd be able to turn off an individual pixel, which is just amazing that this is possible. But that's essentially how it works. Let's see if I flex the board around. They're moving around. I suppose if a scene changed, you'd see something similar to this, only it wouldn't be flowing quite like this. Let me get this under higher magnification. I don't know if it'll work, but it might look a little interesting. I'm going to have to refocus that again. There we go. There's taking a look at it. A little higher magnification there. Okay, here I took one of the polarizing screens and put it under the microscope. It just looks like a whole bunch of prisms sitting next to each other. It's kind of interesting.